In this episode, I'll show you how to create your own EMA cross detector. There's a few things you're going to need in order to complete this episode. Firstly, you need the ability to calculate your own exponential moving average, also known as the EMA. Now, in a previous episode that I've linked in the description below, you can absolutely learn how to do that. Secondly, you need to make sure that you've got the Pandas Python library installed. Now, Pandas is an amazing library for anything to do with quantitative analysis of stocks and signals and forex and all the rest of it. Make sure you've got it installed. I've created a link down the bottom in the description page to show you how to do that if you haven't got it already. All right, let's get going. I wanted to tell you about the results from the algoquant.trade trading bot algorithm one. We've generated 102% net profit from 12 months of backtesting. In the last three weeks, we've generated 10.01% net profit. If you want to get these signals so that you can integrate them into your trading, why not sign up at algoquant.trade? Hey guys, so an EMA cross is a, it's a popular uh, technical indicator used to identify potential trends in the market. It involves plotting two different EMAs on the chart, looking for a crossover between the two lines. Uh, an EMA is a type of moving average that gives more weight to recent price data, which makes it more responsive to changes in price compared to a simple moving average. So to, to use an EMA cross strategy, you would typically plot a shorter term EMA and a longer term EMA on, on a chart. For example, you might use a 20, 20 period moving average and then also a 50 period moving average as well. Uh, when the shorter term EMA crosses above the longer term EMA, it's considered a bullish signal indicating that the market trend may be shifting upwards. Uh, conversely, uh, when the shorter term EMA crosses below the longer term EMA, it's considered a bearish signal indicating that the market trend may be shifting downwards. The first thing we need to do is to construct our EMA crossover detector. Now, ultimately, we want to get rid of all of this code that you can see me highlighting there in main. So let's get into that now. You can see there I've gone to the indicator underscore lib. Now, in a previous episode that I've linked in the description below, I show you how to develop your own uh, EMA calculator. So we're just going back to that same library, and now we're going to add in a new indicator, which is our EMA cross detector. We start by creating the function itself, and I've defined that as the EMA underscore cross underscore calculator. I like to th keep things really, really simple when I name them. It makes it really much easier for me when I go back to my code to understand what I've actually done. For those of you who've been following the series for a little while, you'll recognize me adding in my comments to my code as I do every single time. I can't tell you how much time that that has saved me over the years. Um, so make sure that you're always commenting your code as you're working through it. Okay, now the function itself accepts three different variables. The first one is the data frame, which is the data that we're going to be calculating on. And that should include the two EMAs that we'll be using. Then we provide the two EMAs that we're going to be calculating on. Now, uh, as you probably saw in the previous episode, I have a specific way that I name the columns. And you can see in there that I'm notifying any user who's using this code that the EMA must be provided as an integer. And that's to ensure that we're able to really keep the, those column names the same because we'll be using it for this function as well as for our future EMA cross strategy um, in the next episode. So the first thing I'm going to do in that function then is to start to specify those names. So the EM1, EMA1 column uh, variable is the EMA underscore with the string. You all recognize that from the previous episode. And the EMA2 column is the exact same.
Now, how this function works is it creates two new columns, which is called position and preposition. Okay, now effectively what you want to do is you want to check that, <clears throat> check if the EMA is higher or lower uh, for each one. So that's how you kind of generate your EMA cross, as I kind of explained earlier. So what you then need to do is to create a, the first one, which kind of crosses in one direction. The second column then shifts all of that for crossing in the second direction. And by comparing those two columns together, you're able to see if a cross event has occurred. That's a very uh, pandas specific way of doing it. And it's much, much faster than trying to iterate through row by row and kind of test each one and you know look at the previous one, make sure if it's higher or lower. So what I've done here is I just create those two columns, position and preposition, and then I just compare the two uh, EMA columns together. For those of you who are into Lambda functions, another way that you could, could do this, which is pretty fast, would have been to create a Lambda function and just have a look at the previous row. I don't believe it would be quite as fast as this one, but regardless, for a thousand rows, which is what we're working with, this is pretty instantaneous. I just put a quick little thing in there to drop any not applicable values that just kind of saves us from coming across any errors later on when we start looking at the strategy. And then I create a column that says if a crossover has occurred from those two comparisons, then set it to true. Everything else is false. Okay. You can see there the use of NumPy, which should have been installed when you installed pandas. And here you can see a little Lambda function to kind of just get that true false operator. We're getting towards the end of the function now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and kind of get rid of those position and preposition columns. They don't really add anything to the rest of the algorithm. And frankly, uh, they'll probably be a little bit confusing if you're trying to do any error shooting or, you know, have a look through what's going on before. Uh, so by the end of this function, I just want to get them out so that I'm only returning useful information back to the user. Now we're just going to return back to the user. With our EMA detector up and running, let's update main.py so that we can see it in action. Now, like I said, we really want to get to the point where we can get rid of all of that kind of code in main later on. We'll actually do that in the next episode. For now, let's just go back and start to add in our EMA crossover. Before we got to this point in previous episodes, we've already gone through and calculated the EMAs that we'll be using. We calculated the 50, the 20, and the 200, and we'll only be using the 50 and the 200 for the rest of this episode. So let's have a look at it. You see there I've set EMA cross to be equal to the indicator lib, which is our pseudo library, uh, and then we're going to pull in the EMA cross calculator. From there, I'm going to provide the variables, which is going to be a data frame from the EMA 200. We're going to put in our EMA 1 as being a 50 and our EMA 2 as a 200. Then we're going to print the results of that to the screen. Okay, see it's pretty fast, which is good. And you can see there are a whole bunch of results. Now, unfortunately, because the EMA is so rare, it doesn't actually show us that much. So let's update our main in order to have a look at the results that return true, i.e. a crossover event happened. To do that, and you've probably seen this code a few times if you're following this series, we're just going to extract only the rows that have true when it comes to an EMA cross. Okay, so EMA cross true variable. And then I just extract the true values from the EMA cross data frame.
print them to the screen. And there you have it. How, how good is that? In the next episode, I'll be showing you how to calculate your very own EMA cross strategy.